Way to go, guys. <clears throat> Many times someone has come to me and said, Ron, didn't Jesus say whatever you ask for, if you believe, it will come to be? Pretty sure uh, what the question is they're asking, I say, is there something you've prayed for that you didn't receive? Sure enough, I find myself listening to a litany of, 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 of frustration over things that didn't happen that they prayed for. We pleaded with God for a baby, but we're still childless. I asked God for a job for months, but I'm still unemployed. I've cried out for my parents to get back together, but they're getting a divorce. I prayed for my husband to stop drinking, but he doesn't think he has a problem. Nothing is more devitalizing than unanswered prayer. I sat with a family who wondered about unanswered prayer. I had first met them when I met their son at Beaverton High School and had the privilege of leading him to Christ. Uh, ten years later, after he graduated, still single, he was driving home from work late one night when a car coming the other way swerved into his lane and hit him head on. He lay in a coma for months. When he finally awakened, he and his parents learned that their life was forever changed. He couldn't feed himself. He needed help getting dressed in the morning and undressed at night. He had to learn to talk again. He had to learn to walk again, which was a labor. He went through many major surgeries over the next 10 years. They prayed desperately for God to heal their son. They came to me and, uh, in the church and, and asked uh, me to pray for him. They had looked forward in their retirement years to travel and leisure. Instead, they found themselves resigned to a, 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 a round-the-clock round care that he needed. In his final years, things got worse, and they prayed that God would shield him from suffering. God neither answered their prayer for him to be healed, nor shielded him from suffering. So I sat and talked with them. They were faithful in believing in God to the end of his life when he died, but they wondered why God didn't answer their prayers. Almost every deathbed stands as a monument to unanswered prayer. Why doesn't God answer all our prayers? The author of Ecclesiastes writes, God is in heaven and you are on earth. There's some things about God we will never understand. God has reasons why he doesn't answer all our prayers. I want to talk about four of the biggest obstacles to God answering our prayers using Matthew 7, 7 to 11. If you want to follow along on the Bibles that are under the seats, it's going to be on page 971. The first reason God doesn't answer our prayers is because we don't ask. Jesus says, for everyone who asks receives, the one who seeks finds, and to the one who knocks, the door will be opened. If we're not receiving answers to prayer, maybe it's because we're not bringing our requests to God. In Greek, there are two imperatives. Uh, one is the aorist imperative, so it's, it's just a, a, a command, a one-time action. The other is a present imperative. Uh, in which something is to go on and on. Jesus uses the present imperative here. He says, keep on asking, continually seek, and go on knocking. Jesus says, I want you to pray again and again. Prayer isn't something we pray once and then we forget about it. So if you're not receiving answers to prayer, maybe it's because you're not getting around to actually praying. Or you've given up praying for something. You tried and you figured, well, God doesn't care. Another reason for unanswered prayer may be our requests are not good. When Jesus says, ask and it will be given to you, it's not an unconditional promise. It's absurd to think that whatever we ask for, God's going to give it to us. No, 
there are some conditions on answered prayers, and one is that they need to be good requests because God only gives good gifts. I do not give my children everything they ask for. If I did, I wouldn't be a good dad. I had a lot of fun when my sons were earlier. I particularly remember our son, Mark. He'd come running in in the morning and, and he said, Daddy, are we going to shave today? I said, shave? How old are you? He said, four. I mean, this picture, he's a little older than four, but it's the only one I had in my phone. And uh, I said, really? You already need to shave? Most guys don't shave until they're like 16. Is your hair... Is your beard long and hairy? He laughed. You know, we've been through this conversation morning after morning. And so I'd put a little extra shaving cream in my hand and, and give it to him. And he'd always laugh when I'd do that. And so while I was shaving, he was putting it on his cheeks and nose and forehead and ears. And he would dance around the whole time, loving it. Did I give him a razor blade when he asked for it? No. No good father would do that. We don't give our kids sharp knives or let them play in the medicine chest. Likewise, God doesn't give us things that are not good for us. He does not give us things that are out of his will. God doesn't work that way. He doesn't say, wow, that was a terrible request, but I'll give it to you anyway just to prove a point. God doesn't give us petitions that aren't good for us. This helps us better understand Jesus' promise. Read this with me. Ask and it will be given you. <clears throat> so God doesn't answer everything <clears throat> that we ask. He lays down some parameters. Read this with me. Which of you, if your son asks for bread, God only promises to give us good gifts. Uh, his point is, is that if, if human fathers who are inherently evil know how to give good gifts to their children, how much more will your Father in heaven give good gifts to you? It's a how much more argu argument. How much more will God, who's always good, always righteous, give us good things? If you, earthly fathers don't give you uh, a stone when you ask for a bread or a snake when you ask for fish, how much more will our good God in heaven give good gifts to us? We make many requests which from God's perspective are clearly dangerous or harmful to us. So his answer is no. Obviously, we're happier when he answers yes, but we should be just as appreciative when he answers no. Sometimes that's as much a sign of his love for us. Does not mean he hasn't heard us. It means we've asked for something that's not good, that we'd be better off without. The day I came to grips with uh, uh, the reality of, of, of this uh, uh, really changed my whole thinking about prayer. Uh, when I graduated from college, I worked at, in the summer at Valley uh, Presbyterian Church, and uh, I began dating a girl. And she worked with me as, with high school kids and college kids. And uh, we, had, we had a great relationship. And so after the summer, I went, went back uh, to Chicago for graduate school. And we continued to date. And then I came to visit her uh, Christmas break. And we had four great days together. And uh, the final night after we exchanged our Christmas gifts, she says, I think we should put the brakes on the relationship. I said, Okay. I thought she wanted to just kind of tap the brakes gently and slow the speeding love train down. But I learned that she was wanting to slam the brakes down hard and jump to a new set of tracks. So I went back to uh, Chicago that winter depressed. And I would pray to God every day, God, please change your mind. Help us get back together. And I was like feeling sorry for myself, I was going through my classes and uh, moping and uh, 
One day, I was reading this passage that we've just read, and I was on my knees by my bed, and I said, God, I know that you only give good gifts. If I ask for bread, you're not going to give me a stone. If I ask for fish, you're not going to give me a snake. So I'm praying to get back together with my girlfriend. Obviously, that's not happening. So it must mean you have something better for me, someone better. So I want to tell you now, I'm ready for you to bring someone better into my life. And if you want me to go it alone in life, I'm willing to, to, to go it single. That day I got off, off my knees and, and from that on I kept, I stopped feeling depressed and feeling, uh, you know, like a victim. And, uh, and it was a, a couple months later that God brought Jory into my life and uh, who would soon become my wife. Uh, she's a godly, beautiful, intelligent, talented woman. What are you laughing about? <laughs> I, mean, I was a catch. <laughs> Clean cut, shaven. I was the talk of the town. Jory has been an unbelievably good gift to me. Far better than that other gal would have been. God heard my cry. God does not, has reasons why he doesn't answer all our prayers. Do you understand that he hears your cries? He knows the anxiety you feel over an impending surgery. The exasperation you feel over a disagreement with a son or daughter. The struggle you face with caring for an aging parent. The desperation you have for your marriage. Or a heartfelt desire to find a dating or marriage partner. If you've been praying about a matter and nothing is happening, I challenge you to review your request. It may be the problem. Ask yourself some tough questions like, if God granted this request, would it bring glory to him? Would it advance his kingdom? Would it help people? Would it help me grow in my faith? Since God only answers good requests, that means we need to learn how to ask good requests. Learn to ask for things that are in God's will. How can we know God's will? One of the best ways is by reading the Bible. The Apostle John writes, this is a great verse, read it with me. This is the confidence we have in approaching God. <clears throat> To have answers to prayer, we have to ask for things that are good, that are in God's will. Do you know the Bible? Do you try to spend time daily reflecting in the Scriptures? Still another reason our prayers may go unanswered may be because our timing is wrong. God hears our request. He wants to grant our request, but it's not the right time. He says, not yet. He knows that if he waits for a later time, he'll receive more glory. If he waits until the situation becomes humanly impossible, he will receive greater honor. The Apostle John, one of Jesus' disciples, tells about one of Jesus' friends, a guy named Lazarus. He got very sick, and his sisters realized that he was dying. And so they sent word to Jesus, quick, come and heal him. So Jesus jumped up and rushed to Lazarus. No, that's not what we read. We read, now Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus. So when he heard that Lazarus was sick, he stayed where he was two more days. Who does this? When we get a 911 call that one of our uh, family members, or close friend, is, is sick and dying in the hospital, we drop what we're doing and go. Jesus waited until Lazarus had been dead four days. Then everybody had, you know, they'd moved on. They decided it's too late. It's hopeless. Then when he raised Lazarus from the dead, it was so unbelievable that many people came to believe in Christ. In fact, that was a turning point when hundreds of people came to believe in Christ. 
Sometimes people know, sometimes Jesus knows that if he waits to answer our prayer, he will receive more honor. Sometimes he knows we're not prepared for what we're asking. In such cases, in his mercy, he waits to answer our request. He withholds answering our request because it's not good yet at that time. Be wary of insisting that you know better than God when he needs to answer your request. He has reasons for his not yet. When we fly into tantrums demanding that God answer our request, you know, he just shakes his head and says, you know, kick and scream if you want. But I have reasons why I can't answer your request right now. Trust me. I know what I'm doing. God does not answer every request that we make. A little boy asked his dad for roller skates. So his dad bought him some. He bought him the kind that are kind of called practice skates. They worked, but they didn't go too fast. And the boy kept saying to his dad, Dad, could I have some ball bearing roller skates? Dad says, no, you're too young, son. They go too fast. But he kept pestering his dad. And so finally, his dad's uh, love got the better of him and he bought him some, some ball bearing roller skates. So his birthday came and boy was opening all his gifts. And when he got to the box with the skates, he was so excited. He didn't care about any other gifts after that. So he took them out and he was trying them on. And his dad says, now listen, son, these go way faster than your other skates. So you have to be very careful because if you're not, you get going too fast, you could go flying out into the street. Well, one day the boy was roller skating and he got going way too fast, came around a turn, he couldn't make it and he went flying out into the street just as a sand truck was coming down the road. Ran over the boy. And as the father, with tears pouring down his eyes, picked up his lifeless son, carried him back to the house. He said, God, next time I ask you for something and you say not yet, help me remember that I may be asking for ball-bearing roller skates. You've got your reasons. God has reasons why he doesn't answer all our prayers. Still another reason God may not answer our prayers may be because we are disobedient. In this case, God does not answer our prayers because we're not ready for the answer. We have some growing to do. The request is not the problem. We're the problem. Suppose uh, one day you get up, uh, ready, get ready to go for work, and you come out and your car doesn't start. You say, great. Now what do I do? Then you remember your neighbor has two cars, and he said to you, hey, if you ever get in a jam, just let me know. I'll loan you one of mine. So you decide to take him up on his offer. And as you're walking up to his front door, you're kind of thinking through how you're going to ask, and his little dog comes and starts nipping at your leg. He's biting at your pant leg, and, you know, you've seen a dog like that, you know, the kind that barks when you leave, barks when you come back, barks late into the night, leaves little gifts for you on your lawn. You hate the dog. This dog's nipping at you. You can hardly walk. And so you give him a sly, quick kick. And then you look up, and the neighbor's sitting there with his arm folded, staring at you. Is that a good time to ask for a favor? Or do you need to clear some things up before you ask for something? Some of us are like that. We need to clear some things up with God before asking for favors. The psalmist declares, if I had cherished sin in my heart, the Lord would not have listened. Now, this can't mean that God refuses to listen. Otherwise, how would he hear our prayers when we, when we pray to ask to, for, for him to forgive us? More likely, it means that when we're uh, harboring sin, we feel so guilty or embarrassed that we don't bring our requests to God. Like, when you've kicked your neighbor's dog, you don't feel good asking to borrow his car. We feel like hypocrites before God, so we don't bring our requests at all. You ever felt that way? 
Isaiah says the same thing. Your iniquities have separated you from your God. Your sins have hidden his face from you so that he will not hear. Sin hinders our prayers. It causes us to feel hesitant to bring our requests to God. Like, who am I to ask God anything? When our prayers are not answered, we're prone to wonder, what's wrong with God? Why won't he give me a break? Not many people are willing to take an honest look inside and admit maybe I'm the problem. When our prayers are not being answered, maybe it's time to see if you're the problem. Any of you know what this is? Yeah, a little sippy cup. So, any of you use a sippy cup? Any of you kids use a sippy cup? How about you adults? Huh? All right, so let's suppose, you know, I came and I found Tyler here, and Tyler was using a sippy cup. You hold that, all right? There you go. And uh, what would you say to him? If you found, you know, this grown guy, using, you know? I'd probably say, honey, you need to grow up, you know? Um, that's what God is saying to us sometimes. Hey, you're asking for requests, but you need to do some growing. You need to grow in your faith. Sometimes God can't answer our prayers because we're living in disobedience. God has reasons why he doesn't answer all of our prayers. This side of heaven, there will be some things we will never understand about God. But it's important to always believe that God gives good gifts and only gives good gifts. In 1921, David and Sevilla Flood uh, became missionaries and went to the heart of Africa. They went to a country then called the Belgian Congo. And uh, they met up with another couple, and the four of them went into this area where nobody had ever heard about Jesus Christ. But when they got there, the tribal chief wouldn't let them live in their town. He made them stay a mile away. So the only contact they had with those people was a young boy that the tribal chief had come to them every day to sell them food. Well, over the weeks and months, via flood, led this boy to Christ. But they never met anybody else. And after some time, the other couple uh, contracted malaria, so they left. So the floods were on their own. And then Svia, pregnant with their second child, they had a two-year-old boy, a little girl. And uh, five days after, she contracted malaria as well. So five days after she gave birth, she died. So David uh, dug a crude grave for her and... Um, then he went back to the mission and he said, God has taken my wife. Here's my little girl. I obviously can't take care of her. And I'm going home. God has ruined my life. And so this little girl was adopted by a family in the United States and came to live here. And when she was in college, she got a Swedish magazine in the mail and she was going through it and she saw a picture of this uh, little girl <clears throat> crude grave with a, a marker on it that said Svia Flood. She recognized that was the name of her mother. And so she got somebody to help her. Uh, it was all in Swedish, so somebody to translate it for her. And she learned all about the missionary activity of her mother. Well, that caused her to want to go to Sweden to find her father. So she went there, and after an emotional reunion with her brother who was two years older than her and she learned that her father had remarried and fathered four more children and she told them she said I want to um, see my dad they looked a little hesitant and they said well you can but uh, you know he's ruined his life with drinking and you got to know if you mention the name of God he just goes berserk but Undeterred, she went to see him and she came in and he was laying in bed and pretty sick and he was 73 years old and he had bottles all over the house. She said, Papa, 
And at that, he turned over and he was so apologetic for leaving her and for all of his drinking. And, and she says, it's okay, Daddy. God took care of me. And at the name of God, he stiffened again and turned back toward the wall. And he says, God ruined our lives. She says, oh no, Papa, God took care of us. And she said, let me tell you a story. It's a true story. And she told him all about what happened in Africa. She said, 600 people came to believe in Jesus because of you and Mama. You didn't go there in vain. Mama didn't die in vain. And at that, he turned back over and he stopped crying and they talked and after years of bitterness, he came back to God. But I can't help but wondering if things wouldn't have gone better for him. If he hadn't felt like God had ruined his life, but he had remembered that God only gives good gifts. When we pray, it's important to remember that God only gives good gifts. <clears throat> Not all of our prayers are answered. Some of them go unanswered because we don't ask God. Or we give up and we don't keep asking. Sometimes our requests are not answered because what we're asking for is not good. Sometimes our prayers are not answered because our timing is off. Sometimes our prayers are not answered because we're not living obediently. Young married? Teenager? Single person, empty nester. If you ask requests of God and you ask persistently and your requests are good and your timing is right and you're living in obedience to God, God does amazing things. Lord Jesus, thank you for your promises in these verses that you hear our prayers. And that if we ask, you'll answer. But you only give good gifts. And Father, we confess that many of us have been angry with you for not answering our prayers. And maybe not realizing that what we're asking for is not good. Or it's not the right time. So forgive us. So I want to give you an opportunity to pray right now. If you realize that Maybe you don't have a relationship with God that's solid. You could invite Jesus into your life right today. Say, I believe that you're the Son of God. Died for my sins and I want you in my life. Or maybe you have some things that you've prayed for that haven't been answered. And Why don't you try praying about them right now? You bring them to God again, but maybe in a new way. Asking, you know, is this a good request, God? Is there a way I could make it better? Or is the timing not right? You pray right now. I'll give you a minute just to talk to God. Father, thank you for reminding us that you are a good God and you only give good gifts. You don't grant our requests when they're not well thought through. Maybe the timing's off. And so we're sorry for maybe feeling disappointed in you or angry with you. So God, we, we trust you that you know when to give and what to give and the best to give. Help us grow in our prayers and learning how to ask for things that are good. In Jesus' name we pray.